Hey everybody, this is round zero of Pandemic, Reign of Cthulhu. This is going to be the setup stage. I wanted to set it up on camera just uh, because there is quite a bit of setup for this game. But luckily it is quite well documented in the rule book. The numbering system is a little bit, a little bit confusing, but if you follow the numbers, you get it down. So the setup uh, for the board is the first step. And the very first step is to take the Cthulhu card from the Elder God deck. And I have placed it ahead of time at the front, uh, at the top of the desk, uh, the, the deck, and place it um, over here as the, as the Elder God deck. And I'm going to need six more, I think. Is it six more or... One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then, so five more. Plus Cthulhu himself. So one, two, three, four, five. Right off the top. I'm just going to put that on top of the Cthulhu card. Technically, you're supposed to line them up across the board and then flip them over as they're revealed. But I'm, I've got limited real estate here, so I'm just going to put them there and flip them over as they go. And I'll know that the last one is Cthulhu. Second step is to place the old ones. Well, I just did that. Okay, so the third step is to place cultists and one shogoth. So, or shogoth. Uh, so I'm going to sh uh, shuffle all the summoning cards. These are the summoning cards up here. Uh, I've shuffled them already, but I'll, I guess I'll shuffle them again. Nothing is staged on this very exciting solo playthrough <laughs> channel. <laughs> Everything is actually shuffled, and, and the deck is cut, and all that things. Okay, so the first thing I think is flip over two cards and place three cultists at each location. These are my players. They, they don't really want to be here yet, actually. I'll put them up there. I'm not going to play all, all, all of those figures. Okay, so that's six cultists. This is the cultist stockpile here. This is an important... Oh, this is important because if I run out of cultists in the stockpile, when I go to draw a cultist, then the game is over. That, that's not going to happen now, but in the future, should I try to draw a cultist because the game is telling me to place a cultist, and there is no cultist in that pile, game over. That is one of the lose conditions. Okay, so I've got a graveyard and a swamp. The graveyard is red color-coded. The swamp is yellow co color-coded, so that means the graveyard is going to be somewhere here in Kingsport, which is color-coded red as well. So I'm looking for a graveyard, looking for a graveyard. That's a great hall. Here's the graveyard. And there are three cultists there. Is that right? Three cultists? Wow, that's really bad. All right, three cultists, and then a swamp right there, three cultists there. The significance of three cultists is that if I am told to place more cultists at that location, I don't. And instead, I reveal uh, an old one, an elder god. That's not good. Good that I wouldn't want to do that, but that's the threat. All right, reveal two more summoning cards and place two cultists at each of those locations. This place is just crawling with cultists. The boardwalk in Innsmouth and the train station in Arkham. So that's interesting, because that's actually where our players are going to start. That's the first square for the, sp the players. Two more cards. And I'm going to place one cultist at each location. The park in Arkham. Is that the park? No, that's a diner. Park is here. And then a, uh, a pawn shop in Innsmouth. And then I believe I draw one further card... And I'm going to place a Shogoth there. Shogoths are these miserable creatures. They're, um, 
they're just sort of aberrations from another dimension and their their thing is that they are trying to make their way he's going to the market so he wants to make his way to the closest gate this is the these are gates these um these tokens represent gates these are gates to another world to another realm if the Shogoth is able to make his way to the, the gate, then the game is over. So him being there means that I am already one, two, potentially two moves away, two, two turns away from the end of the game, or something like that. Um, I should look that up, actually. Let's see. Shogoth moves during the summoning stage of the game. If a Shogoth, um, yeah, each time this icon appears on a summoning card during the summoning step, move a Shogoth. Okay, cool. So they don't always move on the summoning step. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm wrong about that. So these are summoning cards and there is a symbol. Yeah, there, there's the, uh, there's the symbol of a Shogoth moving. So sometimes it will move, and if it moves to the gate, well then it can be it can co it can be lo co located on a gate. But then if there's one more move, then the game is over. So if he gets here, there, he can be there. But then if he is being told to move again, I guess he moves through the gate or something and rips reality apart or something. Okay, so that's all the summoning setup we have to do. So that's our summoning deck. And that's going to be one stage of every turn. But next up for the setup is to give each player an investigator, a figure, and some sanity tokens. First of all, this is a solo playthrough, so there's only going to be um, there. I'll, I'll do I'll play two two different characters, and I don't like to mess around with sanity tokens that get removed. I instead just add sanity tokens. So I'm going to, um, I guess, just kind of shuffle the, the deck of, of players and, um, and then choose this one and that one and see what I got. Okay, looks like I've got a cultist and a hunter. Now, both of these characters have special actions. One is that the hunter can remove all cultists when doing the defeat a cultist action. And then once per turn, you may defeat a Shogoth for only one action. Well, that's huge because Shogoths usually take three actions out of your four total actions. Uh, and then the occultist, as an action, move one cultist up to two locations. Oh, that's interesting. So I can move the cultists around. And then for two actions, move one Shogoth one location. Wow, these are these are both really powerful characters, to be honest. Um, so that's really nice. So that's the cultist. And that was completely randomized. I did not know what I was going to choose. And, and, I mean, you know, all the characters have a, a special power. So strictly speaking, they're all valuable in their own right. But I will say that that certain combinations sometimes just kind of they they end up um, they end up being a little bit more effective than 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 other combinations. So that's nice. Okay, so that the, my players are good. They start here, which is interesting because that means that they they start with two cultists on their on their location. The hunter should be able to handle that take care of that problem pretty swiftly though. And now I need to set the game's difficulty. So for an introductory game, you leave 44 clue cards in the deck. For a standard game, you remove one clue card of each color from the clue deck. This is the clue deck or the player deck. So I'm going to remove, uh, I'm just going to do introductory. The, um, the, the challenging, the expert mode, has you remove uh, two 
two cards of each color, and I did try that very recently and got slaughtered, so I'm not going to do that for this playthrough. I'm going to keep it, keep it a little bit reasonable uh, for myself. Now, I think next I shuffle in some relic cards. Yes, I do. So I'm going to take four relic cards and I'll shuffle them into uh, the deck. I'll do that later before I actually start the game. And then I do need to draw... Okay, so I do need to shuffle this now, actually. So in a two-player game, you get four cards to start with, so that's four. No reason to conceal... Oh, that's a good... that's a good hand. So it takes five clue cards of one color to shut down a gate. So she's... she's well on her way to having that. Uh, I'll just give that from left to right. I'll give that to the occultist. Next four cards. Oh, this is good. So the hunter has a relic. No, a hunter has two relics. That's crazy. And then two Arkham cards. Okay, so that could be very, very useful. I like that. That's really cool. She's a relic hunter, I guess. Um, oh, I forgot to shuffle. Oh, that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to need uh, to shuffle the evil stirs cards into the remainder of the player deck. So to do that, I create uh, four sub-decks of roughly even amounts. And then I place one evil stirs card into each deck. Then I shuffle those. This isn't an exact science. It doesn't really matter, like, all that much. It's just you're trying to just lose an evil stirs card somewhere so that they happen every now and again during the game. It doesn't have to be exactly... Um, doesn't have to be super, super precise. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, that's good. So that's the player deck, that's the draw deck. This is the summoning deck. This is the sanity die, you'll see that happen at some point. And that's it. That's the setup, I think. So the a player's turn involves a couple of things. Um, it involves four actions. There's a bunch of actions you can take. They're all listed on the action card. But probably what we'll see a lot of is the hunter going around getting rid of cultists, while maybe the occultist will go around and close gates. Or maybe it'll be a little bit of both. We'll see. Uh, there are bus stations around the city as well to help you get from one place to another, but that costs a clue card, so I'm not sure how often I'll be using that. A different character type has um, basically free passage on a bus, so I tend to use that a lot with the reporter, but with these two, I, I, I may not end up using it. Who knows? We'll see. We've got a Shogoth on the board. That's not great. We've got a bunch... We've got a couple of cl clusters of cultists that could summon an elder god which will have a big effect on the game so those are certainly early targets for getting for getting those cleared out and we only have this many cultists before we start to lose the game so we 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 want to we want to get rid of as many cultists off the board back into this pile to keep us alive for for longer. So we'll see what happens uh, in the next game. I'll 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 start with round one. Thanks for watching.